The world is going through a quiet but powerful shift, not driven by politics or technology, but by people. Birth rates are falling, people are living longer. This combination is changing the structure of populations across the globe. The result? Aging societies, smaller workforces, and serious questions about future economic growth. Yet it's a topic that doesn't get the attention it deserves. So what does this shift mean for the global economy, and which countries are better prepared for it? But before we dive deeper, we need to understand a fundamental concept, the demographic dividend. Only working age people, usually between 15 and 64, contribute significantly to an economy. Children and the elderly, while vital parts of society, are economic dependents. When a country has a large proportion of working age people and fewer dependents, it creates a window of economic opportunity. This is the demographic dividend. It's the sweet spot where more people are earning, saving, investing, and consuming, boosting economic growth. But once a population starts aging and fertility drops below the replacement rate of 2.1 babies per woman, that window starts to close. Let's look at how this is playing out in different parts of the world. Japan is one of the earliest examples. Its population has been aging for decades, and its workforce is shrinking. Sectors like construction, healthcare, and manufacturing are already facing worker shortages. At the same time, the growing number of elderly citizens has led to rising healthcare and pension costs. By 2023, Japan's dependency ratio, the number of non-working people compared to working age citizens, reached 68%. That's a major challenge for any economy to manage. South Korea is facing an even steeper decline. Its fertility rate dropped to just 0.72 in 2023, the lowest in the world. Starting 2026, the population is expected to shrink. By 2065, Korea's working age population may fall by half. This puts pressure on everything from pensions to public services to long-term growth. Across Europe, the situation is similar. The baby boomer generation is retiring. Pension costs already make up over 12% of GDP in many countries, and overall aging-related expenses in the Eurozone are now over 25% of GDP and rising. But while many developed countries are aging, others are just entering their demographic sweet spot. India, now the world's most populous country, has a young population. More than 65% of Indians are between 15 and 59, with a median age of just 28. India's demographic dividend started in 2011 and is expected to peak around 2041. This large young workforce could drive growth through productivity, consumption, and innovation if it's supported with the right policies. Africa is on a similar path, but at an even bigger scale. By 2050, one in every four people on Earth will be African. Over 60% of the continent's population will be of working age. In sub-Saharan Africa, the labor force is expected to double from 505 million in 2023 to more than a billion by 2050. These changes are shifting the balance of global economic potential. We're already seeing this reflected in global politics. The inclusion of the African Union in the G20 is just one sign of a changing world order, one where emerging regions are seeking a stronger voice. Now, it's important to remember a lower birth rate isn't automatically bad. With fewer children, governments and families can invest more in each one. This could mean better health care, better education, and higher productivity. A smaller workforce can still thrive if it's well-trained, healthy, and supported by smart policies and innovation. So while the aging challenge is real, it's not unmanageable. It all depends on how countries prepare. Right now, the world is at a demographic turning point. On one side are aging nations trying to maintain their economic momentum. On the other are younger nations with the potential to drive the next phase of global growth. But none of this will happen on its own. Older countries need to reform their pension systems, rethink immigration, and invest in automation and innovation to boost productivity. Younger countries must focus on education, infrastructure, job creation, and health care, or they risk missing their opportunity. This is one of the biggest economic stories of our time, and how we respond, globally and nationally, will shape the future for decades to come. But here is a big question for you. Are we ready for it? If you liked this video, make sure to support us by hitting like and subscribe. And for more such content, 
Keep watching Global Economics.